with the new house being painted, are you comfortable with others doing it, or would you rather do it, considering you used to work as a painter? Okay. Did you bring that one up because you know how pissed off I am about the paint job they've done? Oh, the I knew how you were pissed off about the uh, all of the stupid little tapes. That's one of the things. Oh, I didn't okay. know there was more. Are you guys ready for line of story time? Our painters, who I will not name because it is not my intention to drive any business to them, <laughs> have done a great job of applying product. Fantastic job. Straight lines, smooth wall finish. I want to give them, I want to give credit where credit is due. But they have taken the most ass backwards. Frankly, I don't know any word to describe it other than moronic approach to painting our house that I have ever seen in my life. They painted about 40% of the house. Okay, about 40% of the house. Are you wearing nail polish? Oh, cool. Okay. They painted 40% of the house and managed to put the wrong product on every single surface. What? Okay. So originally, we were planning to do touch-ups on the ceiling because we were only going to take a little bit of, a, a little square of drywall here, a little square of drywall there. So what we did was ceiling paint fades, right? Particularly on popcorn ceiling because you have to use oil and oil paint fades to a much greater degree than latex paint. Okay, so what we did was we grabbed a little slice of the existing ceiling and we color matched it. Okay, but the plan changed when they ripped out half the freaking ceiling drywall. We were like, okay, well, we should just do a fresh coat of paint. And once you do a fresh coat of ceiling paint somewhere, a ceiling will look white to you until you put new paint on it. And you're like, holy crap, it was not white before. So what they did was even though that changed and they were supposed to know this, they applied color matched faded, faded color to the entire ceiling oh, no. of two floors of the uh... house. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about the walls. So they put the wrong color on the ceiling. Now let's talk about the walls. For the walls, I was explicit. The number of times that I said, I want my swear button. I want my swear, the number of times I said, eggshell. Okay? We don't have a swear button. Eggshell finish, okay? <laughs> For walls, you use eggshell. Do you know why? You use eggshell because it's a good balance between a more flat finish, which hides surface defects, okay? And a gloss finish, okay, which is scrubbable. Because in paint, okay, you can only suspend so many particles in the solvent. All right, so you've got, your, you've got your stain blocking pigments, okay? You've got your color pigments, all right? You've got your, you've got your, um, you've, you've got your resin, okay? So that's what gives you that hardness. That's what gives you that scrubability. Eggshell is the standard on walls because while it might look great to put a satin finish or a flat finish on your walls, it will look great until the second Someone washes their hands in the bathroom, goes out into the hallway and kind of goes like this, and a little droplet of water gets on the wall, and you go to wipe it, and you're like, destroyed. Immediately destroyed. So you use eggshell on walls. The number of times that I said eggshell to the, uh, to the contractors, to the designers, it's in the, it's in the documents, is and it was it was like a meme. It was it was hilarious. Every time we talked to the, the head contractor, I'd be like, and it's eggshell, right? He's like, yes, yes, of course, yes, it's eggshell. Okay. They put satin finish on the walls. How much of them? I looked up the specific product. Oh, many walls. Many walls. I looked up the specific product, the first two reviews. It's not scrubbable at all. The painters come back to me, they're like, this is actually within the same range of the Master Painters Association, blah, blah, blah. I send them back their own stupid documentation. I go, hey, couldn't help noticing that the range, okay, the range of, of, uh, of, of like resin content is enormous. Yes, the one you used happens to fall in the range, but eggshell is at the way other. Range. 
And there's a reason that I asked for it. There's a reason I specifically said, and you know what's the best part? Is when I saw the satin paint cans on the job site, before they painted anything, I said, hey, those aren't for the walls. Please double check, eggshell on the walls. And they were like, yes, 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 yes. And they put satin paint on the walls. Look, I'm not trying to be like a little, uh, a little house renovation zilla here. That's not the point. The point is that I was very specific because there's a very specific reason that we don't think about it. Fine. Think about it from another perspective. Think about it from an environmental impact perspective. Okay. The amount of toxic freaking paint that we are producing, the finish of which will be immediately destroyed the second anybody touches it. Why are we doing this? Why don't we use something durable? Why don't we do it properly? So, are they repainting your whole house? They are, they are repainting everything they did incorrectly because it was all in the work documents. It was all in there. And Egg you shell. corrected them on site. That's and, worse. And, the, and oh, 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 best part is that in the work documents, it also said, because I'm particular about paint, the house that we live in now, the reason that the siding is peeling is because the, well, I'm just going to say it, dumbass previous owner applied a stain over top of a paint. It was a good, what? it was, okay, so latex stain and latex paint are not as different as oil paint and oil stain, okay? A, la a latex stain, like a quality latex stain, has a lot of paint-like properties. It's designed to soak into the wood like a stain, but it also, because it's latex, um, it, it has a bit of a rubbery film to the top. So, unlike if you had put a latex paint over, say, um, uh, actually, no, you can paint over, painting over stain is fine. So unlike if you had put, say, an oil stain, like a, like a semi-transparent stain over, over a paint or something like that, we were immediately flake off. It didn't immediately flake off, but I told them, I told my realtor and I told them, I was like, hey, it would have been really nice if you guys had like, it's a high quality stain they used, good product, but it would have been really nice if you guys used the right product. It's, it's amazing how many professional painters and how many homeowners Get all, get all caught up in little accessories, like little sponges for cutting the lines or whatever else, and apply the wrong damn product to the wall. Um, so yeah, uh, so our paint has failed on our house twice in the 10 years that we've been there, and it should have been more like once. Um, and the reason is that once you've got a layer that's not adhering really properly, it's not gonna be a problem for a couple of seasons, but once you go through those heating and those cooling cycles a few times- And the UV. That adhesion is not gonna be, well, once you've layered on top of it, it'll protect it from a lot of the UV, but that adhesion is not gonna be strong enough. And so what's gonna happen is over time, what you want is you want an impermeable, perfect barrier, right? Like that's the point of paint. You've got this moisture and this sunlight protecting barrier, okay? And when all the layers underneath are adhering correctly, that barrier should be the one to flake off, right? Because it's getting all the direct sun. It's getting the water, the moisture, the rain, right? But when you've got one, two or three layers down that is going to be failing for a different reason, all of a sudden you're gonna go to scrape this thing. Every year you're gonna look at it, you're gonna have new failures. You're gonna have new cracking because you've got that one weakest link layer in there somewhere. So it's very frustrating for me when people use the wrong the wrong product because you're basically destroying that wall. You are like destroying that side. So much. Sorry. I said I feel like I just learned so much. Yeah. So I'm I'm very I'm very passionate about doing things properly when it comes to painting, and so I was very frustrated that even after they applied the satin, they were trying to tell me that it was the right thing. And I so I, I went on. I forget who they were using. Sherwin Williams, I think. So I went on Sherwin Williams site. I'm like, hey, couldn't help noticing that they have a product that is eggshell. So my conspiracy theory is, you know why I think they wanted to use satin is because it's easier. It's faster. Remember how I said that flat paints and that includes satin hide uh, imperfections. Well, they hide imperfections in your wall, but they also hide imperfections in your paint job. They make it easier for you to roll on a nice, smooth looking surface. Oh, 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 it gets better, right, I forgot. So Jake couldn't help noticing when he was at the house that some of the walls had literally, like how many, Jake? How many little pieces of Probably tape? Probably like 80. Yeah, okay. There were walls. One wall, yeah. Yeah, there were literally hundreds all over the house of these little bits of masking tape for all the little 
the little surface divots and pinholes from pictures the previous owners had on, or little imperfections from the drywallers patching things. Except they went around and did it after they already primed and put a coat of paint on. Why would you do that? Because you know what happens, okay? You put your primer on, okay? You put your coat of paint, you go and notice there's a fucking hole in the wall. You put a little piece of tape on there, okay? Now you have to go get your putty. You gotta putty it. Then you gotta prime it because you can't just paint right over putty. That's the other thing. That stupid satin product was a primer paint combo. So it was another laziness factor. Okay, so you gotta take that. You gotta now prime it because if you paint over top of putty, the absorption rate is different on paint and putty. So now you gotta prime it. Then you gotta do not one, but two coats of paint over top of that imperfection that you fixed. Then you've gotta feather your work so that you're hiding this change. Also, unless you're rolling it, right? You're gonna have brush strokes, so you're gonna have to roll it, which means you're gonna have to paint. For every one of those little spots, you're gonna have to paint an area this big. You're gonna prime, paint, and paint again. An area this big. So on a wall, freaking Jake, that wall, maybe this size with the 80 tape marks on it? Yeah. I was trying to think of a parallel. You know, like cobblestone road? That's what it looks like. That's how many paint. Why would you do that? You're just, I mean, they're, not, they're billing by the job, right? They're not even billing me hourly. So why? Patch it first. The justification that was given to me for it was that it's easier to spot the imperfections when you've painted it already. <laughs> but like Jake, did it look, did it look not obvious? I mean, at least do some of it, so yeah. you're not, you're not, oh yeah, you gotta wait for the putty to dry. So you gotta putty it, wait, sand, wait, prime, paint, paint. It's a five-step process. And you wanna do that as few times as possible. And even after that, it still won't look perfect because you no, have a won't. patch. No, it won't. You should have done it in the first place. You want as few, it's like, it's like making a tire by filling it with holes and then patching it after, instead of just making a tire that's complete, hoping you didn't miss anything, and if you did, fixing the one thing. I kind of have a photo of it, sort of. You have a photo? Um, okay, go, from, go, from go the check solar out, video. Go check out Jake. It's you painful. can kind of see, this is the electrical panel. I mean, just in this shot, there's one there, one there, one there. Okay. You can see there's one there, one there, one there. But on the wall over on this side, there was literally probably 50 or 80, like crazy. Uh, now I'm getting worked up. <laughs> I know, right? These guys, to be clear, what they did do, and I want to give them full credit for it, is they did an outstanding job of applying the wrong product to the surface. Like, really, they actually did a great job. Not just good, great. And so, it just made, just made me oh, so... Also, use the glass panel. We need the... So angry. We need the airflow. Thanks for watching and subscribing to this week's clips. Now, you might know me as the Wancho producer, but did you know that I'm also a lover of popcorn? That's why I want to give a special shout out to Sizzle for sponsoring this week's clips. Take a snack break, relax, watch more clips, and get 10% off your first order of one of Sizzle's six delicious flavors using the link down in the video description. Delicious.